Good morning, it's time for another bicycle live stream on Mother's Day, Sunday the 9th of May, 6.50 a.m. I've ridden about 30 kilometers and <laughs> finding all the bumps. And this morning, while I think of it, is not only Mother's Day, but it's the Mother's Day Vegan Markets at Southport today. They're on once a month, the second Sunday of the month. Make sure you get down on there and get down. Make sure you get down there and show your mum how much you appreciate her. Take her along, whether she's vegan or not. Take her along and uh, surprise her with how easy it is to find cruelty free products. I'm usually there. This will be the first market since I've started that I won't be at. Um, just not feeling up to it today so just gonna uh, sit this one out but in the meantime if your mother is around show her how much you love her and appreciate her in whatever way feels comfortable for you we're talking about the woman that brought you into the world and made so many sacrifices for you and that was her initial intention, even if things didn't work out that way for you. And if she's not in your existence anymore, you can still wish that spirit soul um, a safe journey, a safe existence. You can always be the well-wisher of those with us and not with us. So that's not this morning's topic though. Maybe I should have actually done the topic about Mother's Day. But the topic is about a survey that was commissioned for No Meat May, where they surveyed a thousand men in Australia to find out if they would give up meat for the animals, for the environment, for their health. And the startling statistic, or one of the startling statistics that came out of this survey is that three quarters, 73% of men, of a thousand men surveyed, said they would rather die 10 years earlier than give up steak and burgers. Astounding when you hear that statistic and you hear that information and you think, can that really be true? Are, are men really that stupid? As the male of the species, I'd have to say yes, men really are that stupid, but I just want to <laughs> go into the reasons why men are that stupid. It's also sad to see that 81% of men claimed they cared about the environment and climate crisis, yet 79% were not willing to give up meat to help the climate crisis. Good morning, Matt. Two days in a row you're watching. That's awesome, mate. Thank you. So they mentioned in this article, which I shared, I think, two days ago now on, on my page. It was Friday. They mentioned, they talked about the reason why is masculinity, perceived masculinity, which, you know, many, many, many times I've talked about false bodily identification, the, the things that happen when we think we're the body, the, um, and this is one of the reasons, but they've missed a really big reason here, which I want to talk about, a big reason why men, three quarters of men would rather die young um, and it, you know it is related to this this false image of masculinity of like oh yeah you know the, the gruff you know strong I'm the man I've got to work out in the gym and I've got to have a, a tough job and I've got to can't show emotions and all that horse shit you know which belongs in doesn't belong anywhere it's never belonged anywhere it belongs so far in the past it should never have existed and all that that horse shit gives us is that way of thinking, I want to talk about where it comes from, but all that that gives men, that way of thinking, is 
a shorter life, an unhappier life, an unhealthier life. Um, and that's really, when you analyze it, it's really sad. So why would somebody um, put themselves in that position of living an unhappy, unhealthy life simply because of this perceived masculinity? Well, the, what they did mention in the article in relation to masculinity is... Well, they talked about masculinity, but they didn't go far enough. But so, what what uh, what they were, were saying time and time again is that men don't want to be perceived as weak. And the irony <laughs> of that is that it takes strength, as in courage, to express our emotions, to admit that we feel vulnerable, that we don't have all the answers, that we're not Superman. It actually takes strength and courage to do that. So when men are talking about masculinity in the way that they've talked about in this article, they're coming from a position of fear and weakness. They're not coming from a position of strength. Um, they're definitely not coming from a position of strength and balance. They're coming from um, actually being afraid, actually being incredibly insecure, incredibly fragile. Um, and it is overcast, Matt. Yes, it is overcast. <laughs> Good observation. Um, but where, let's go a step deeper. Let's dig a little bit deeper. So we understand that men want to appear masculine. The reason they want to appear masculine is because they're coming from a place of fear, um, that they do not feel courageous enough to express themselves, that they have this false understanding of what true masculinity and strength and courage is. But what is underneath that? Why is there a fear? Why is there a fear of appearing vulnerable why is that such a big thing for men it's you know in the i think they mentioned it in the article that that women um find it easier generally speaking to express emotions and we you know we know this and, and to be emotional and and to be supportive which is especially uh, relevant on mother's day so you know that's not news to anyone but why do men have this almost feels like organic need to be the man? Well, connected with this masculinity and connected with the false ego, which is where this false idea of masculinity comes from, is a, is a component that they didn't mention in the article, and that's related to addiction. Now, I've talked about addiction before, and addiction is the real reason, the elephant in the room, the real reason why men or women, for, in relation to addiction, won't change, won't face the issues that they're having, won't own up to the problems they're struggling with because if you're a man and you had to admit that it's rather than admit that no I don't want to give up eating meat you know I choose to keep eating meat rather than admit um, rather than say that the real reason underneath it is that it's not that you choose to keep eating meat, it's that you are so you are so weak, basically, so unable to control your desires that you can't stop eating meat. And when you are at that point with an addiction, whether it's a meat addiction, alcohol, drug, sex, rock and roll, <laughs> had to put that in there, whether it's any of these sort of addictions, what we tend to do is to 
protect ourselves against the elephant in the room, against admitting that we don't actually have the, not the willpower, but the control of our desires. We don't actually have the control to be able to stop. Now, if a man was to admit that, it would take incredible courage, incredible strength, an incredible surrender. And that's the foundation of where all this fear and needing to be in control and pretend that you're the man and, and, not, and not being able to admit that you can't stop eating meat or you can't stop smoking cigarettes or you can't stop drinking alcohol or whatever it is, underneath it all is this inability to control um, those desires that are coming up and in relation to that, the inability to face the fact that that is something out of your control and that the only way to control it is to surrender spiritually to a higher power. It's the only way. There's, there is no other way. We spend all our lives searching for a way to make willpower a permanent thing, something that, that we are able to um, incorporate constantly in our life, only to find ourselves um, repeatedly thwarted when we realize that willpower doesn't have much power at all. So have a think about that. Have a think about the actual reason underneath men's inability to get rid of their masculinity is a fear coming from an inability to admit that they are not in control of their desires and they don't want to admit that that would make them appear weak and the whole thing is just built on this very shaky foundation of lies and and inability to be honest with ourselves and others. So, hope that's given you some food for thought on Mother's Day. And once again, let me say, mothers are amazing. The sacrifices they make to bring us into the world, to teach us, to nurture us. And we should always respect and love our mothers. Live vegan, save lives, ahimsa.